Okay, imagine that this was the set that I had. Imagine I had the following set. The set contained not a, um, not a then b. Now this is not the negation. This is just a regular not a if uh, not a then b. Um, I had the claim uh, b then c. I had the claim c or a, and then I had the claim. Um, a if and only A if C. Okay, so let's imagine that this was, let me make sure I wrote this down, right? Uh, not A, not A, then B, B, then C, C or A, and then A if and only F C. Okay, yeah. Okay, so let's imagine that this was the set that I had. This is, uh, this is uh, it's seemingly uh, imposing, but using the rules that we had, it's really not that difficult to figure out whether this set um, is consistent or inconsistent. Um, after you've been doing this a while, you'll be able to just look at the set immediately and know for the most part whether or not it's consistent or inconsistent. But right now we'll um, just work through the problem. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to line all these um, parts of the set up vertically and then apply my rules. If I apply my rules, I put a check by the statement. Uh, and once all my thing, all my um, statements have checks, or I arrive at an inconsistency, we'll determine whether or not the um, the rules have been applied and whether it's consistent or, it, or not inconsistent. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to bring down this not a. So we'll write not a, and then underneath this, the second part of this set is the claim that not a, and then b. The next part is B, if B, then C, so we write that. So that's one, two, three, four. The fourth part is C or A. And then the last part is, I'm, I'm gonna need a bigger board, um, A, uh, if and only if C. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and now I'm gonna start uh, applying these rules. And what I'll do is, I should write this over here, I don't want to run out of space. Um, no, I won't run out of space, this will be fine. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do, it might be a little small because I have to cram quite a bit in this area, is I want to, let's start with this. So I want to apply the rule for conditional. What, remember, what does the rule for conditional say? Um, well, I'm going to draw my branch. It says that it's going to be the negation of this so the negation of not A is what? Well, if I have not not A, it becomes A, right? A and, and then B. So I have, if I have not not A, it becomes A, then B. Remember the, the rule of, uh, for uh, the conditional. And just quickly to refresh your memory, the rule was if I have A, then B, I apply this by saying not A or, and, and then B, right? So that's what the rule says. Here's what I was given. So if I have not A, I have to negate it. So it becomes not not A, which becomes A, and then I have B. Um, so what we'll see then is that this automatically closes, right? Because I have not A here, I have A here, and not A here. That's a, a contradiction. I can't have both A and not A. A, right? That's a contradiction. So this is, this clean, this part of the branch, this part of the tree rather, is closed. So I can't do anything more with this part of the tree. So if I need to use any other part of the tree, the only part I have is this. I've applied the rule that I had in the conditional for this, so I put a check by it. So that's been checked. Okay. Now I have uh, the claim if B, then C. If B, then C. So what do I need to do? Well, remember, if I have B here, and I'm going to apply the same rule before, the rule was if A, then B, and the application of that rule is not A, B, then I recognize that in saying if B, then C, this needs to be a not B, this needs to be a not B, and then C, all right? But what do, I, what do I recognize here? Is that I have, on the same branch of the tree, 
a B and a not B. You cannot have both a B and a not B. That's inconsistent. So this branch of the tree closes. Okay. So we have applied the rule to two now, and we've closed two branches of the tree, but the tree is still growing, right? The tree, the tree is still growing because what the tree is attempting to do is the tree is continually growing where open branches will permit growth. When all branches close, it is inconsistent. If all my branches have finished growing and I don't have an inconsistency, then I'll obviously have open branches and my tree will be consistent. So I have two left, C or A. What was the application uh, of the rule with respect to um, disjunct? Remember, we said if you have a disjunct and you have A or B, and you want to apply this to um, the tree, all we do is we create branches and we say A or B. Either A or B has to be true. So it's pretty simple. So we have C or A. We have C or A. But we know that A is already bad, right? We've done A before because there's going to be a contradiction between A and not A. So we know that the A branch is going to close, right? Because we've already used A. So we know that any time A arises within this tree, it's automatically going to be closed. So my tree is growing. Uh, I get to the application of C or A. I write C or A, just like the rule tells me to do. But I notice that I, this branch, this part of the branch closes. The tree closes. Why? Because I already have a not A. I can't have not A, a and not A because that's a contradiction. So now my branch starts growing this way. I've applied my rule. And the only thing I have left is the, the biconditional. Once I've applied the biconditional, I'll know, and some of you already know whether or not this is consistent or inconsistent, but you'll definitely know. The reason why I sort of constructed this, um, this set is because the set is a good, it's a good pedagogical. It's good for teaching because you can see how the, the tree grows and you can see clearly where um, parts of the tree close because of it. Um, um, contradiction and where parts of the tree uh, open. So the last one is going to be A if if A if and if and only A if and only if C. Sorry about that. What is the rule for the biconditional state? Remember we said the rule for the biconditional if you have A if and only if B, we say that uh, we have A on one side and not A on the other side. We have B on one side and not B on the other side. So that's the rule, and I need to apply this rule to A and C. So what I do is I open up two pieces of the, the, the um, two branches of the tree, and I apply this rule. So this is going to become A and not A, and this is going to become C and not C. I just made it. I have just a little bit of room left. We know that anywhere there is an A, it's going to close that part of the branch. Anytime there's an A, it's going to close that part of the branch because I have a not A. Right? So this branch, this last part of the branch is closed. And the question is, why is it closed? Well, it's closed because of the A. It's, this part is not closed uh, based on the C. There's no problem with um, the relationship between this C and this C. The problem arises with the relationship of this A and this A. Right? So that forces this part of the branch to close. This part of the branch closes. Why? Because of this C. This C and this not C uh, create a contradiction, and this part of the branch closes. So now that you can, now what you'll see is that every part of my branch in my truth tree, um, based on the original statements within my set, have closed. This A is closed. This not B is closed. This A is closed. This A is closed, and this not C has closed. Okay. That concludes uh, the discussion on truth trees um, and the application of statement logic within sets. Um, I hope this has been informative. I hope I didn't go through uh, the video too quickly, but YouTube only gives me 10 minutes, right? So I got to get through it, and I might even be over now. Um, hopefully this makes sense. Um, you can use truth trees to apply to uh, many different forms of uh, argument and the analysis of argument, and I hope that helped quite a bit. So. Uh, with that being said, thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Goodbye.